Okay, in this video we're going to derive the quadratic formula, which is um, not really the most exciting thing in the world, but it's something that you'll almost certainly have to do at some point, and uh, it's good practice with something called completing the square. So I'm going to assume you know how to complete the square um, in this video, because if you don't know that, you're going to have a lot of trouble deriving the formula. But if you do know it, you should be able to follow along. So um, the idea comes from solving this equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, um, and I'm kind of color coding a, b, and c so you can kind of follow them through the... Um, the derivation. So step one is I'm going to divide through by a. So I'm dividing everything I see by a, um, which gives me just x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals zero. Um, and now to complete the square, what I like to do is I like to move the um, stuff that doesn't have an x to the other side, and I'm going to leave a gap on the left. So x squared plus b over a x, leave that gap there, and then subtract c over a from both sides, so I get equals negative c over a. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to complete the square. That involves um, taking the coefficient of x on the left side, divide it by 2, so that's b over 2a, and then square it, and then I'm going to add it to both sides. So that's what's going to happen here, x squared plus b over a x. So I'm dividing b over a by 2 to get b over 2a, squaring the whole thing. If I square the whole thing, I end up with b squared over 4a squared equals, and then I'm adding it to both sides, so on the right-hand side, what I've done, instead of doing negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared, I rewrote it as b squared over 4a and then minus c over a. Same thing, it's just, um, it's a little more useful, and you'll see uh, kind of in the next step. So the point of completing the square on the left-hand side is that I now have a perfect square trinomial, um, and if I have that, I can always factor it into uh, the square root of the first thing, so that's uh, x, and then it's going to be plus half of um, the coefficient of x, so it's going to be the quantity x plus b over 2a, and then squared. So that was uh, the square root of the first thing is the square root of x squared is x, and then um, plus, and then half of the coefficient of x, so b over a over 2, which is b over 2a, which you'll remember is the thing that we squared and then added to both sides. So that's always going to happen when you complete the square. I mean, it's kind of the point, is that you get a perfect square. So we have that, and then on the right-hand side here, I'm actually going to get a common denominator. So the common denominator between 4a squared and a is actually 4a squared. So the first fraction is fine. The second one, I need to multiply the top and the bottom by 4a. So I'm going to end up with b squared, and then minus 4a times c, and now it's all over 4a squared. And um, from here, what I want to do is take the square root of both sides. So the square root of the left-hand side... This is actually a little more complicated than what I'm doing, but um, it's how pretty much everyone does this. So the square root of the left-hand side, I'm going to say is just x um, plus b over 2a. And then on the right-hand side, I'm going to have equals plus or minus. Don't forget the plus or minus. That's a huge deal. If you forget that, you're uh, kind of sunk on this. So plus or minus the square root of um, b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Okay, so time for a new page. So I just recopied that line. Uh, the left-hand side is actually pretty much done at this point. So equals, I'm going to leave plus or minus the square root. So if you look at that thing inside the radical, um, the denominator is actually a perfect square, right? 4 is a perfect square. A squared is a perfect square. So I can actually take that out of the radical. So it's going to be plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac. And then it's all going to be over because I took the, the, four, I took the square root of 4a squared, and that gives me just 2a. So I have at this point... Now I'm going to subtract, uh, I'm going to solve for x, so I'm subtracting b over 2a from both sides, like that. And then they have a common denominator, so I'm going to just write them as a single fraction. So it's the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. That is the quadratic formula, and you've got to memorize that. So if you don't have that memorized, you're going to have a rough time going forward. So memorize that. I think you should probably also um, make sure you definitely understand the derivation, and um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do an example. So it's x equals, usually people say the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I always say all over 2a to make sure that I remember to divide everything. So let's do an example. So 2x squared minus 5x minus 4 equals 0. So I've got a is 2, b is negative 5, and c is negative 4. So the solutions to this are going to be x equals the opposite of b, so it's the opposite, so negative, quantity, whatever b is, b is negative 5, and then plus or minus, the square root of, it's going to be b squared, so I like to use parentheses here so I don't forget the square of a negative is a positive, so the quantity, negative 5 squared, 
minus 4 is just part of the, the formula, so minus 4, and then a is 2, and c is negative 4. And then it's all over, so big fraction bar, 2 times a. Okay? So that's mostly done, and now we just kind of clean up. So there's a lot of things you could screw up here. Uh, we have minus a negative, so that's going to become positive. So x equals uh, minus negative 5 is 5, plus or minus the square root of um, negative 5 squared is positive 25. And then I have negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, times 2 is 32, so it's plus 32. And then all over 4. And then uh, what I like to do is I like to write um, the solution separately, and then I'm going to add 25 and 32 and get 57 all over 4. But I'm going to write x equals 5 plus radical 57 over 4, or x equals 5 minus radical 57 over 4. Those are actually your two answers that you get. So um, that's it. Uh, it doesn't really get more complicated. And you just have to watch out for squaring a negative, taking the opposite of a negative. Just make sure, really, that you, you keep those signs straight and do the right thing. Um, so that's the quadratic formula. I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck.